Hi Copic in the Craft Room fans, Michelle Houghton here. I have a special treat this week. I am joining in with Craft and Kimmy and I am helping with their June release. So this is their second day of the release. Um, if you're coming to this later, it's happening June of 2019, but this um, beautiful mermaid is called Your Mermazing. That's the stamp set. It's got some fishy friends and some sentiments. I have chosen the mermaid and one of her friends, and I'm going to put them in an underwater scene. So I'm going to start with a mermaid, and I'm starting with skin. And we are going really pale, so unrealistic pale, going all the way down to an R000 to start and then using an R01, and in a few seconds here you'll see an E93, but that's as dark as this is getting. So she's staying very pale with the idea that she's undersea most of the time, doesn't get a whole lot of sunlight, actually probably healthier for her skin, even though she's soaking in salt water, I would assume, most days. Um, but I am bringing those shades or deeper values from the outer edges of her face inward to one side of her nose and then from the underside of her arms up kind of down both sides of that cylinder body and I always add a little bit of an indent around her tummy kind of showing that belly button region and then I'm blending this smooth with my R triple zero adding little bits here and there with the E93 and R01 to deepen some of those areas. Her eyes are going to be green and I base them in a G21. Then I took G28 from the top half down, the top portion down, and blended with G24. YR30 is what I'm starting all of that hair with. And notice I'm doing the outer portions. That inner portion has not gotten colored yet. With my YR31, that is when you see me come in with that um, into those center areas because that is behind her. It's falling behind her shoulders and underneath that top layer. Then with the same color, YR31, I'm flicking from the top down and bottom up. But she's got wavy hair, so I'm also going into those waves, the portion of the wave that curves in toward her. So the parts that dip in toward the mermaid get darker. YR14 is next, flicking from the top down, bottom up. Notice I'm hitting now each of those curves. So I'm treating each wave individually. And again, as it curves in toward her body, the waves, it gets darker and it goes out away from her body. It gets lighter. That's where it catches that highlight. The hair again falling behind her, behind her shoulders and behind those front layers is going to get darker all throughout. So I get a lot more of this YR14 in there. You don't have near as much of those lighter YR showing at this point on those back portions. YR18 is next. This is a very orange color. So again, these are not necessarily super realistic colors for skin and hair. Um, I'm not going for realism. She's a mermaid. But I do like the fact that I want to still have, I personally like showing texture in hair and total personal artistic choice on my part um, so that I am adding those flicks and that texture in. What E09 is the one I'm ending with. Very, very limited. Fewer flicks with this color and in very limited amounts. It's to push areas back to show that depth and so that we have some depth, some layering happening. And now I'm going to blend back and I'm going to bounce back and forth between all of those colors. So I'm skipping a, a color sometimes and then kind of bouncing around as needed.
All right, we are gonna move on to the clothing or her tail and her little bra top, bikini top, sorry. I'm starting with a V12, so a very light violet. Notice I'm leaving some white down the center of her tail and also the center of each portion of her fin, her tail fin, and then I'm coming back and blending those edges out with a colorless blender right away. There's more layers that are gonna happen, but I wanna soften that edge while it's wet. V04 is next from those outer edges inward, again, showing that it's a curved kind of cylinder or cone-like shape. On the little top, I'm coming from the center, kind of not outward, flicking outward, and then I'm darkening kind of that piece at the top of her tail. V17 is next, again, from the edges in, smaller portion this time from that center knot out and then I'm starting to blend those colors back hitting reverse going back to V04 going back to V12 and finishing with the colorless blender then I'm moving over to our seahorse friend and he's gonna start with a YG01, filling him all the way in. YG03 is next, adding some dimension or shape to him, giving him a little bit of roundness in his head and his body, thinking about it in terms of a kind of a spherical or a ball shape. So kind of coming around that edge in a crescent type shape underneath those creases in his belly, underneath kind of the pieces or the bands along his fin as well, and smoothing those out by hitting reverse and going back through my colors. The little starfish gets two colors, YG01, and YG63. Smooth that out with a YG01. And then I added a little bit of E49 in the eyes of the starfish and the um, seahorse. Then I'm taking a colorless blender and I'm dotting on the mermaid tail and then I will on the seahorse as well. I am holding that marker in place for at least a count of three or four. And that's how I'm gonna see that texture. background. I am doing long sweeps. This is actually done fairly quickly, not as quickly as what's in this video because I had to speed it up so we could get all of this in. But it's a layer of B's, BG's, G's, and a, I think that's it. Yep. B, B, V, and a G. I'm holding the marker way over on the side so it gets wide stroke and I'm starting all the way at the top, brushing all the way down and all the way at the bottom, all the way up. Finishing with colorless blender, again, holding it in place to push the color out and create those bubbles. Then I'm using a BV31 and I'll also use a B00 just to touch on the edges of those bubbles kind of create an edge. So I've emphasized the one that the seahorse had as part of his stamp. I'm adding ones for the mermaid. So really easy to do. And when I add those two colors on the edges, I'm truly going about three quarters of the way or like maybe even a little further, like five, six of the way around the edge, not all the way, but just finishing those bubbles up to have a little bit crisper edge and finishing one more time with the colorless blender right in the center to make those pop a little bit more. But the bubbles take patience because you do have to hold that colorless blender in pace, place and circle it a little bit. Thank you so much Crafting Kimmy for letting me play along in this month's release. Hope you have a chance to stop by her site so you can pick up some of her new stamps. And if you haven't had a chance recently, stop by my blog at www.scrapweaver.com to see the live teachings coming up in the fall and any Copic questions. You can always shoot me an email and you can also add those here at the bottom of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a happy, colorful day.